<laughs> Hello, gorgeous, beautiful stars. Paris Star Channel here welcomes you from Paris. Like you know, we are in Paris. Like right, right over there. And there's a little bit of Paris over there. Like right, right here. We are. <laughs> And as you can see, can you see it? Like here, Le Bon Marché, we are actually in front of a shopping center called Le Bon Marché. Quite discreet, as you can see right over here, but inside there is a kingdom of luxurious products. So guys, rumor has it that Guerlain is launching a new and exciting product foundation from the gum called terracotta and naturally derived ingredients beautiful finish i am so curious of that product so here i am to jump into le bon marché to look for guerla and to swatch and to play and maybe to do some shopping so yes guys today the theme and the subject of today's episode is going to be all about the guerla baby <laughs> So yes guys, if this is something that interests you, please tune in to the party where we celebrate diversity and beauty. Diversity makes us all different and beautiful. So yes, allow me to jump into Le Bon Marché and do some shopping and then we jump into the studio for a new and exciting test. Guys, so, Guerlain, as you can see, the consultation is done and now let's go back to the studio for a real test and real fun with makeup from Guerlain. Hello gorgeous beautiful stars! <laughs> Paris Star Channel here with a new and possibly a very exciting episode, guys. Here we are back after a little trip in Paris when I went to the Le Bon Marché, a very nice, wonderful shopping center when I consult myself with lots of brands and lots of makeup artists about makeup, obviously. It was such a great day. I visited the Westman Atelier, I visited the Tom Ford, I visited the, uh, the Charlotte Tilbury and of course I have visited Guerlain. 
<laughs> because I was very curious about the new foundation Terracotta from Guerlain. I personally like Guerlain really very much. I think it is a very unique um, an original brand that proposes different types of makeup, a different approach, a makeup, no makeup line, something that is very subtle, but at the same time beautifying. So when I heard about the new foundation from, from Guerlain, I was just like, yes, yes, I am absolutely very curious. I want to see it. I want to know more about it. So I went and consult myself and well the results are going to be here in the form of the test just to tell you one more thing and i think it is very important i haven't bought the foundation because what has happened um in the in the guerlain in paris was just this foundation has 30 shades but these shades they were so strange they were so weird the, the the that i just was saying that i just don't know which one i want which shade do i need so they decided to give me samples and with these samples i actually had the chance to test this foundation for the past few days and i didn't like it I didn't like it. I didn't like it. So in the end, I decided that I am not going to go for this purchase. I purchased something different that is in here that we're going to feature in this episode. Um, but yes, I did not enjoy the foundation, the terracotta Guerlain, the way that I was expecting that I will. So that is... We, that is why we have this review, because I want to share with you my own personal opinion about this foundation and I want to explain myself why I decided not to purchase it. That is why we are going to do the review only from the samples. If you think that this kind of a review is not a true review, this is what it's going to be. I definitely will not going to waste my money for the, for the product that I'm going to feature only once in my episode. After testing it for the past few days, I'm absolutely sure and certain that this is not the foundation for me. And I would like to share my opinion with you so that you will know what happened and why I changed my mind about my purchase decision. Good. With that being said, let's start first the swatches so that you can see what is going on. And my, oh my, what is happening? The swatches, the, the shades. There are 30 shades with such, diff, such, such a strange shades. I mean, sometimes there can be a brand that can give you uh, like 10 shades and it's fine because it fits. And sometimes they can, there, is, can, there is a brand that can give you 30 shades and it doesn't fit. And it was like that with a Gerla. I was there like swatching and I was like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But hey, here we are and let's go to the swatches. So first swatch that I'm going to do, is going to be Gerla Terracotta in the shade 0.5N. There's a little bit of a bottle in here and a little bit of a funny spatula. And we are going to swatch it right over here. Good. I think this is good. And then we, I'm going to take my finger and I might actually need a little bit more so that you can see what is happening. During my tests, during the past few days, I actually used it quite a lot. But I guess, yes, you can see the swatch right now. And the other swatch that I'm going to use is going to be 1C, which usually it's kind of my my shade. And it is, as you can see, cool tone rosy from the swatch. Please apologize, I'm not looking for at you. I'm looking actually at the mirror while swatching it. So that's the 1C. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more. It dries really very quickly, guys. It dries quickly. Good. 
So this is the 1C terracotta. Now you can see it better. And you know, since I have this foundation that I love and it's Guerlain Parur Goldskin Matte in 1C, we're going to cons uh, c compare the 1C from terracotta with this 1C. That is completely different. The shade range is absolutely inconsistent with the other uh, foundation lines and that was just so confusing. Why? Why brands do that? While the, sh the shades cannot be the same within different lines. Uh, I don't know. Am I asking for too much? Am I going crazy? <laughs> you'll see. You'll see. When we're gonna put this side by side, so this is the C from 1C from the Parur Gold Skin. And you might expect that it might be at least similar. Is it similar? <laughs> um, uh, questionable. <laughs> so yes, guys, the, the undertone of this foundation, the, the terracotta, is just very strange. Something that I was just so confused about. So, this is the Terracotta 0.5N. This is the Guerlain Terracotta uh, 1C. And this is the Guerlain Parur Goldskin in 1C. They're all <laughs> different. They're all different. What is happening? What is happening? So, we are going to leave them for a while because these foundations, they, they oxidize. <laughs> You'll see. You'll see. Good. Guys, um, so what are we going to do now? We're going to, while well, this is going to oxidize, we're going to jump into the uh, ingredients so that you can find out and discover with me what kind of an incredible ingredients we're having because this foundation um, that comes in 30 shades, 35 milliliters, claims to have 95% naturally derived ingredients. So what kind of ingredients do we have? Let me tell you in just a second, by the way, a little bit of a disclaimer, I am not an expert when it comes to formulations. I'm just a self-learner um, and the internet is a vast knowledge of all these ingredients. You can study it very easily and so here I am to tell you all about it. So if you would look at the ingredients, there are ingredients marked in green, which in my opinion they're very good ingredients. There are ingredients marked in orange, which f in my personal opinion I have some issues. And then there are uh, ingredients marked in red, which in my personal opinion, they are unnecessary. So right now you can see the whole ingredients list and what do we see? Well, basically right in the beginning, we can see that uh, it's a water-based foundation and we have um, a little bit of the emollients that are supposed to give ourselves a little bit of the moisture they're supposed to lock the moisture there are different names of the of these emollients we are not going to dive deep because you know um i want to you know i since last time i made an episode almost like two hours i want to make this episode much much shorter after the, the water and the emollients we have in red marked alcohol it might be a naturally derived alcohol nonetheless I am not a very big fan of alcohol. Alcohol, when, when I'm using products day after day that have alcohol, my skin is tired, my skin becomes dry, my skin demands an extra moisture. So I personally am not a very big fan of alcohol-based uh, foundations. And Parur Gold Skin has foundation with alcohol as well, but it's non-drying. So, you know, I was definitely, uh, I thought that since there, there is an alcohol in here, there might be some walkarounds. We'll see. I'll tell you about it later. Um, about the alcohol, one more thing again. People who are, um, who are having sensitive skin, who are allergic to alcohol, they cannot use that foundation. And since of my channel, I would like to feature products that are for everyone because my channel is for everyone. Um, that type of a product is not for everyone because of the presence of alcohol. Good. Then we have a product, then we go further and then we have ingredient marked in orange and it is a silica. Well, normally there is no problem with silica. It's a naturally derived ingredient, a mineral and it's a powder ingredient. 
And I, my personal issue is that my skin don't like silica because silica sucks out life of my skin. Like literally. <laughs> totally. Completely. And it cannot be saved. <laughs> it, it cannot be saved. Granted, silica gives you an, a beautiful smooth to the skin. It is incredible how it smooths the skin. But at the same time, certain products with silica can cause a little bit of a flashback. My personal issue with silica is that it's just taking all life, sucking out all life from my skin. And that's why, in my personal opinion, the silica is marked here in orange. Because, as you can see... Combined with alcohol that is on the top of the ingredients list, it's like life sucking out ingredients from, from here. And yeah, we're going to see the results after. Good. But then uh, we, we go further with the ingredients and we see the glycerin, which is a great moisturizer. So, you know, there is a little bit of a saving here, saving grace in here. <laughs> No, there isn't. <laughs> so, um, and then we have Coco Caprilat Caprat, which is another emollient that tries to keep the moisture in our skin. Great. So the beginning is a little bit like of a so-so. We have emollients that try to keep the moisture in our skin and brings moisture in our skin. And then we have the drying side in the form of the alcohol and possibly the powder ingredients that is silica. Then we go further and then we have something that is called brassica cam... Uh, cam <laughs> Um, uh, campestris rape seed seed oil. So this is the first very interesting ingredient that is called a rape seed oil. And what does it do? It is a very rich emollient that that creates some sort of a film on your skin. It is an amazing antioxidant because it is very rich in vitamin E and pro-vitamin A and basically it is an ingredient that helps to nourish and replenish your skin. A very good and ingredient, a very good and interesting ingredient. And my oh my, usually I thought that oils are here to kind of take off your makeup. It for me it was very unusual to see a mixture of oils in the makeup that we're going to put on our skin. So I was very intrigued with how it is going to look like and how it is going to perform. Good. The next uh, thing that we have, we have parfum, we have fragrance that is marked in orange and we're talking about the, the Guerlain. It is absolutely normal and obvious that Guerlain is going to put uh, a parfum, a fragrance in their, in, their, in their products. They always do that. They always do that. And then we have lecithin and lecithin is an, a natural emollient that gives the consistency and viscosity. And, of course, it tries to keep the moisture in your skin. And then we have Caprilli Capric Tree Glycerid, which is another natural emollient that keeps the moisture in your skin. And then it helps to uh, penetrate the actives in, in your skin. Good ingredient. And then we have another active, which is Opuntia Ficus Indica Flower Extract. What is that, guys? It is called a prickly pear extract. It is um, an emollient that is a very punchy and powerful antioxidant, rich in vitamin E. It helps mo uh, to bring you moisture and it, um, it is a regenerating, re revitalizing ingredient. Very good thing. By the way, guys, I am ready. I am ready for this episode. I studied ingredients so that I can tell you uh, what is going on within the, the ingredients. Good. So that's the Opuntia. That's the Pricky Pear Extract. And then after that, we have another active that is Camelina Sativa Seed Oil. And it is a Camelina oil, guys. So it is a natural ingredient that has a very kind of revitalizing, moisturizing 
uh, features. It is very rich in vitamin E as well. It gives you a very good moisture and it is a very good anti-age uh, ingredient that um, that helps to re your skin to regenerate. A very good ingredient. And it's another oil. So it looks like, for example, in comparison with Dior, Dior is having a flower extract that are revitalizing, while the Guerlain approach will be, um, they're going to add oils that are going to nourish the skin. Will they? <laughs> You'll find out. You'll find out. I, I promise you that. And then after that, after Camelina Sativa Seed Oil, we have Argania Spinoza Kernel Oil, which is a very famous argan oil, a very good used argan oil. And then it is a, it is a naturally derived ingredient that has a very uh, good um, nourishing features and protective features. It is um, another anti-age uh, ingredient and it, it brings you elasticity to your skin and it brings you a good moisture to your skin and can even smooth your skin. A good ingredient. And then the last ingredient that in my opinion it is definitely worth n noticing would be the tocopherol, which is a vitamin E, which is a very punchy and very good antioxidant that is going to protect your skin from the external stressors. So when it comes to, uh, to summarize the ingredients in the terracotta guerlain, what do we have? We have definitely lots of emollients, definitely lots of different type of emollients, um, a synthetic emollients and the naturally derived uh, emollients then we that that are going to bring moisture to the skin and try to block the moisture in the skin and then we have the uh, the actives in the form of oils guys we have the rapeseed oil we have the camelina oil and we have argan oil and extremely good ingredients according to the knowledge of the website that are going to be extremely nourishing extremely uh, good in anti-age and the soup rich with punchy antioxidants which is going to be a vitamin e so basically they're going to protect your skin from the external stressors and then on top of that we still have vitamin E in the form of tocopherol and then we have those kind of undesirable uh, ingredients in the form of the alcohol that I think that are unnecessary in the form of the powdery silica that for my skin it is extremely drying and in the form of the parfum fragrance that might be a little bit irritating to super sensitive skin. Guys there you have it the ingredients list so right now let's check the swatches and see what is going on? <laughs> All right, guys, so that would be the ingredients list. So right now, let's check the swatches and let's swatch them once again to see how much it is going to oxidize because I think that is this is a very interesting subject when it comes to the Guerlain Foundation. So right beside that, I am going to swatch 0.5N. Can you see it? Can you... <laughs> Can you see it? How it looks like, guys? It is incredible. It is definitely... Wow. So, that is 0.5N unoxidized and 0.5N oxidized. Let me now jump into the 1C from Terracotta so that you can have a comparison here as well. By the way, the parfum, I can smell it. I can I can definitely smell it. Yeah. Unoxidized 1C and oxidized 1C. Can you see the difference? It is a shocking oxidize, oxidation difference. So basically, if you're really interested in this product, give yourself a little bit of a time, like five minutes, so that you are going to see its real shade. And then we're going to use the Parur Gold Skin right over here to see the oxidation. I mean, guys. Um, and this is something I don't understand. I've seen already some reviews and no one is talking about the oxidation process or hardly ever anyone and do the comparison. I think it is very important, isn't it? Is it important for you? I wonder. Anyway, um, 0.5N, Terracotta. 
non-oxidized, 0.5N terracotta oxidized, 1C terracotta non-oxidized and 1C terracotta oxidized and parul gold skin 1C non-oxidized and oxidized. There you have it so that you can have a comparison. The oxidation is definitely very significant. So what happened in the shop? I was there. I'm like in between. I'm between 0.5N and 1C. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? And this uh, amazing makeup artist, she said that she's going to give me samples so that I can try it at home instead of buying and, you know, without being certain what kind of shade it is. And I am so happy that she gave me this because after testing this, I have decided that this foundation is actually not for me. <laughs> Why? You're going to find out in just a second, but first allow me to wipe out of all of these swatches so that we can continue with this episode and this review. All right, guys, so here we are back. The swatches are gone. The skin is prepped and moisturized and we are ready to do the application. So I suppose the biggest question would be what kind of shade am I going to choose? Is it going to be the 0.5N or 1C? Decisions, decisions. And since I have a major problem with decisions, we're going to mix both of them. But then at the same time, this is the question. Should I buy two types of the foundations to mix them all together to get my shade? I don't think so. I don't think so that that should be the case. So that was another reason why I decided to step away and not, not buy this foundation. Nonetheless, I still want to give you this review because I think there are certain informations that you, in my opinion, it's good to know. Good. So as I've said, I'm going to use a mixture of the foundation. First, I'm going to use the, the shade 0.5N. It is in that bottle and I'm going to use a little bit of a cotton and mix it in the bottle. And with that, I am going to apply a little bit just like so on the side of my face. Okay, now I'm going to close it because this foundation, it dries, it dries quickly. And then I'm going to take the, the shade 1C and I'm going to take another cotton and just like mix it all together here in the bottle and apply it. Good. I think this is more than enough. And now I am going to take the beauty blender and we're going to try to apply this to my face. So here we go. So this foundation, yes, it has a very beautiful a uh, parfum, so to say, um, that is not super potent and punchy and it's going to disappear quite quickly. I enjoy this parfum, but once again, there are certain sensitive skin that I that might not tolerate this type of a parfum. So, you know, as I want to feature uh, products that are for all skin types and just for everyone, this one for sensitive skin, might not be the one. Anyway, I talk too much, um, but I guess, okay. I guess the foundation, it is applied now. And I guess we are ready to show what is happening. Let me have a look to have this comparison, what I've seen before. Yeah. Guys. We are talking about the instant application, which means I've just applied and I already see the things that I do not want to see. What do I see? I see a drying powder mattified effect to the skin. That is absolutely different in comparison with a Parul Gold skin because this is kind of like velvety matte that looks like second skin. While this it's hard to say. It is kind of like a powdery, matte, dry finish in an instant. 
It really is. It's kind of like you don't even need to set it because it's already dry and it has already set and it's going to oxidize on top of that. So there are lots of these features that I'm like, hmm, what is happening? What is happening? So first, let me approach so that you can see it. What I don't see in here is this area. When I can see here already my fine lines over here, I don't know if you can see it, and accentuated pores. On top of that, it looks dry already and I'm over 40 years old. My skin is normal to dry and my dry areas are over here. In extreme situations of extreme dryness, I have so many fine lines and wrinkles that starts from here and continue here. And sometimes I'm afraid if I'm wearing makeup for 10 hours, are some of these wrinkles there just gonna stay forever? <laughs> because of my skin being so dry and my skin forcing to do all these mimics and everything. I'm scared. I'm afraid of the drying foundations. And this is a typical, for me, in my opinion, powdery finish, matte, matte finish drying formula. Which is absolutely shocking because there was supposed to be emollients, there are supposed to be um, oils that's supposed to give me a nourishment and a moisture. Where, where is it? Gerlan Terracotta, where, where is it? Once again, I mean, when it comes to coverage, it is pretty, but it looks like makeup in an instant, absolutely. And also, this is how it looks like when it's covered, and then this is how it looks like when it's not covered. So yes, if you like matte foundations, this is that type of a foundation. But I like a, a foundations that looks like a second skin. This one doesn't. In an instant, it is matte, it is dry, it is powdery, and you can see it right over here. Good, guys. So right now, allow me to, uh, to apply the foundation on the other side of my face, and we'll be right back and continue with this test. All right, guys, so as you can see, the foundation is applied and this side is slightly darker because it has already oxidized and this one is just freshly applied. Once again, allow me to approach. So, you know, there are, there are definitely good sides of this foundation that it definitely looks good. It is smoothing. It covers really very nice. I would call it a medium coverage because you can see I can still see my imperfection in peeking through. But at the same time, despite all those things, it is trying and it's just the beginning. It is just the beginning. And as you can see, this is that type of a foundation. When you apply it, you look a little bit of a ghostly and unnatural, which means you need to add some colors to kind of, you know, bring back a life to, to your face. So what are we going to do? We are going to use a very famous product from Guerlain, and it is Guerlain Paris Terracotta Light, the Sunkissed Healthy Glow Powder, 96% um, naturally derived ingredients, and mine is in the shade 00, zero uh, Claire Rose. This is how the product looks like, and the terracotta, basically the whole terracotta line is a powder line and there are different types. Right now you have a new foundation that we're just reviewing right now. You can have a bronzers that are different types. There are matte, natural and the bronzer that I'm going to feature in this episode. And then you can have a new highlighter in the two shades. One of them is very gold-like, very punchy gold. And the second one is kind of like rosy gold. I haven't picked them up because they were again, once again, very powdery. And I said, I am not going to buy a product that I'm going to feature only once in my episode because of the accentuated dryness. This is not for me. So yes, here we are, here we having the bronzer and I guess the Guerlain is the best when it know, it absolutely knows what, how to make the beautiful plastic packaging. And then the terracotta that I am using has a very unique uh, colors so that you can see it right now in the natural light. 
And this unique formula, it's kind of like a, like a hybrid formula that gives you a little bit of a blush, a little bit of a highlight and a little bit of a bronzer in one. And this is something that I'm definitely interested in. Please do not be deceived though, this is not a blush. This is not a highlighter. This is not a typical bronzer. This is a hybrid product. Well, all of these three products melt together and create, uh, they're giving you a very unique look. And then I was in that store and I bought something. By the way, once again, the experience and uh, the, the Bon Marche in Paris at the counter of Guerlain, it is absolutely incredible and unique. And then I have this, which is Consultation Maquillage from Guerlain. And then inside, guys, I have everything that is written when it comes to the consultation that I have. And then if you will decide some uh, to buy something or to get something from Guerlain, they give you that kind of a beautiful packaging. I love a mixture of white and gold or black and gold. This, it, these are my aesthetics. I love it. And then, can you see it? Then you pull this, this little ribbon, so pretty. And then you take this paper. And this is the product that I would like to show you that is new. Tada! Guys, it is a brush. A brush that has been designed to work seamlessly with the terracotta powder products. So there you have it, Guerlain terracotta brush powder brush this is how the product looks like and my oh my the packaging is definitely a little bit of a breathtaking and since i'm a freak for the for the angled brush i was like i need to have it <laughs> i don't know how how much i am going to use it but i need to have it so there you have it there it is with us and then when you actually it, it comes packaged like this and then when you unbox it from here, and that was actually a very big surprise, it comes in that cute little pouch. Of course, there is a sign of a Guerlain Paris. So cute. I love that kind of a, you know, execution. There's definitely some thought to it. And then you take out the brush. And ta-da! This is the brush you can see Guerlain Paris the bristles they're very nice they're very soft as you can see help send help this is another angled brush that I don't need but I must have <laughs> what am I supposed ah what is happening with these angled brushes why I need to have every single angled brush I don't know but hey, it is so pretty. <laughs> so yeah, and then guys, you have the symbol of the Guerlain right over here. It is very nice, very soft. So I am actually very curious how it is going to apply this terracotta bronzer. So let's go. Let's give it a whirl. Oh, it is quite powdery actually. Good. Let's see and let's try to apply it in the... Oh, la la. Okay, we will definitely have to blend it a little bit. I picked up a lot, but it is blending very nicely. You know what, what kind of impression does it give? As if I would be shaving. <laughs> and I kind of like, oh, shaving, shaving. Good. I guess I went too hard when it comes to the pan. There's no need to do that. You can just do it like so. And it definitely brings a little bit of a color and it kind of blends everything. But I'm going to tell you right away. Um, that type of a huge brush misses the precision. I like precise brush. This one kind of like goes all together your face but it is nice it is not breath breathtaking but it is nice 
And now, right as you can see, suddenly some kind of a color is coming to my face. Very nice. You know how it is. To every every product, there is some sort of a learning uh, learning curve. You know, you need to learn how to apply the product. And since this is the first impression, I might not be super good at this, but I guess this is more than enough and this is what kind of an effect a terracotta light is giving to you as i've said it is a hybrid product when blushes meet with bronzers and meets with highlights and this is the effect that you're getting so it is definitely a bronzy type of um, of um, of a bronzer of a hybrid of that hybrid product bronzer blush and highlights it is very subtle the um, when it comes to glow there is not much of a glow and this is the side of the face that doesn't have the terracotta so, so right now let me finish this and I'll be back with a finished look and we're going to continue with this episode all right guys so here we are back with a finished makeup this is how the terracotta light looks like on my face while applying with this brush there's definitely some sort of a learning how to apply it because this is fluffy this is big so it misses a little bit of a precision that i definitely like a lot but nonetheless it is nice it is still buildable it can be subtle but it can be built up and basically what i'm trying to say that right now we're still ha having that type of a season where i'm not using bronzers we don't have much of a sun which you are going to see while we're gonna do the test while being outside nonetheless it is pretty it is blendable and this is how it looks like so let me approach so that you can see it especially the foundation what is happening with the foundation right after application and what do i see um I'm going to be like that on the side so that I can tell you. I can definitely feel smoothness. I can definitely s feel some kind of a powdery smoothness and I can sense some kind of a mattifying, drying uh, sensation which is definitely not my vibe. As you can see, along with the powders, the dryness is definitely enhanced and increased. And for my mature skin, I do not believe that this is my type of a foundation. But hey, I'm a little bit ahead of myself. Well, I already know what I'm going to tell in the final summary because I have been testing it very thoroughly <laughs> during the past days and I have my thoughts already. So I'm a little bit ahead of this. But anyway, let's just go outside and let's see how this makeup looks like in the natural light. Well, wait, 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 wait. Well, in the meantime, well, let's have a final look uh, and a close up at this foundation here from the studio. Because after the test outside, we're going to see each other after probably 10 hours where I'm going to do the longevity test and the lights of the studios are going to be different. So, you know, there's going to be a different effect. It is a perfecting foundation, no doubt. Mattifying, perfecting foundation that is powdery, drying, and it looks like makeup. <sighs> so yes, um, I'm definitely ahead of my thoughts. <laughs> anyway, I probably said too much. Anyway, let's go outside and let's see how this makeup looks like in the outside world. Hello, gorgeous, beautiful stars. <laughs> Paris Star Channel here welcomes you with a check-in in the natural light and today the weather is cool it is very nice it is chilled and here we are so let me turn um, in front of the Sun so that you can see how the makeup the terracotta makeup and the foundation terracotta looks in the natural light and I guess this is what you can see on your own already that ever from the beginning up up until now it is dry my wrinkles starts from here and then they continue up in here every single time i move my face so if i wouldn't move my face it looks flawless it looks gorgeous 
but as soon as I do something with my face talking, smiling, laughing or whatever, this is what it appears and it stags. So only a few hours has passed. I wonder how it is going to look like by the end of the day. It looks beautiful. It looks flawless. But this is what I said. As soon as I do something with my face, you can see fine lines and wrinkles. I didn't even knew that I have so many. So yeah, that's the biggest, um, the biggest thing about this foundation that I do not enjoy. It's just powdery mud and dry. By the way, hello. Look, someone came to visit. There you are. They always come to visit. Very curious little fellas. <laughs> so yes, guys, let's go back to the studio uh, for the final check-in. The most important one, the longevity check-in and see how it is going to look like after many, many hours of wearing. Hello, gorgeous, beautiful stars. <laughs> Paris Star Channel here with a final check-in and my final thoughts about the star of today's episode, which is Guerlain and its foundation, the Terracotta. By the way, guys, I am not even kidding. I was sitting, working on my episodes, and then I looked at the time and was like, it is the middle of the night <laughs> after 2 a.m., <laughs> which means that I'm said that I was certainly wearing this makeup for over 10 hours. And this is how the makeup looks like. But we but before we're going to get into that details and my final thoughts, first let's talk about um about the terracotta bronzer and the brush so yes the terracotta bronzer as you can see it is right over here it gives me a very healthy beautiful bronzy look and definitely it is a product a very interesting product that as i've said before it is a hybrid a mixture um, but a very kind of like subtle and sophisticated mixture of the blush, of the highlighter and of the bronzers, all of them mixed together. They, they give you that kind of a beautiful, subtle, bronzy look that can be buildable, but it will still be on the bronzy side. You can play a little bit with it by giving a little bit of a shadow, a little bit of a warmth to your face, and it works. It works really very nice, and I absolutely, I like it, and I enjoy it. So that would be the Terracotta Light, a very unique hybrid product. And then when it comes to the Terracotta brush that has been featured in this video, what can I say? You know already I'm a freak when it comes to the angled brushes and I love every single angled brush. So what I like about this, it applies really very nice. It melts very nice and it, and it blends very nice the products and especially the terracotta uh, bronzer from the Guerlain. The only issue that I have it is that is pretty large as you can see and i am a very big fan of the precise brushes as you can see in the size maybe maybe it's not really very visible but this one applies very precisely the products while the brush from the guerlain it is kind of like plop plop Plop, plop, but it blends very nice. So I will definitely find a very good use to this brush. I am certain of it, especially when it comes to the powder brushes. It's just my own personal preference that I prefer to have a precise brush. Nonetheless, this is a very good brush, very interesting. So obviously Paris Star Channel gives a green light to the brush from Guerlain, the terracotta brush. And obviously as well, Paris Star Channel gives a green light to the terracotta light bronzer, a very interesting hybrid product. So yes, with that being said, right now let's go to the creme de la creme of this episode, which would be the foundation. What are my thoughts about the foundation? 
<laughs> I have been trying to use the best skincare, moisturizing skincare to my skin to make this foundation not to look dry. And I failed. I literally failed. I cannot keep the moisture in my skin while using the terracotta foundation. For me, it's just impossible. And for me, the accentuated dryness means more fine lines and wrinkles. More fine lines and wrinkles. What does it mean? This makeup makes me look old. <laughs> And I, uh, who would like that? So guys, let me just approach. If I would be like this, it looks amazing. My skin looks perfected and my skin looks good. But as soon as I start moving my face, smile, laugh or whatever, you can see my age. Just look at this from the close up. <laughs> and then here. And in here, guys. Oh my gosh. And then, guys, if you would look to the side of my face and my fine lines. I did not even knew that I have so many fine lines that start from here and goes in here. And there's the same thing on the other side in here. Look at this. Like, it, it, like it goes in here and it, it just continues. Fine lines just everywhere 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 on my face and i'm just so scared because if i'm gonna wear this makeup for 10 hours by giving lots of face expressions it's normal we're not gonna spend our, the whole day like that right i'm just scared that some of the fine lines they're just gonna stay look at this like here after wearing it my skin is just so tired look in here Normally, I do not see these fine lines and wrinkles. I do see them now. And I think it is because of this foundation that is just drying to my skin, which is very shocking because when you looked at the ingredients, they were supposed to be a super nourishing, moisturizing oils. And when I applied, I just didn't see it. I just, I'm just so scared. I'm really so scared and afraid that just... While one day, because of wearing such type of a makeup for 10 hours or more, these fine lines and wrinkles, they will just not disappear. They're just going to stay because of the accentuated dryness to my skin. So what do I think about the terracotta? Ah, by the way, when it comes to the finish, I think it is very similar to the Yves Saint Laurent All Hours Foundation. I... I think that, well, the formulation is definitely very different, but when it comes to finish and how it works, I think that both both of these foundations, they're very similar. So if you've ever had a chance to see this foundation in action, the Guerlain um, Terracotta is very similar. So if someone would have asked me for who this foundation is, I deeply believe that this foundation might be the best for young people who doesn't have any fine lines and wrinkles and people for oily type of a skin. For me personally, for a person that is over 40 years old, my skin is normal to dry. I do not believe personally that this foundation is for me. If I would have to um, recommend foundations. I think that the Parur Gold Skin Matte is matte, but it is much, much better and it is non-drying for my skin, not like the Terracotta from Guerlain. So yes, guys, the note, I suppose it will not surprise anyone, Paris Star Channel gives an orange light to the latest launch from Guerlain, the foundation called the Terracotta. For me personally, for, for my skin type, for my personal need, for my age, I do not believe that it is a good foundation for the mature skin over 40 years old skin with fine lines and wrinkles that is normal to dry because 
No one wants to not move your face for the whole day. Just before, just because we want to look flawless. Because as soon as I start to do anything to my face, like, 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 like look at this. What, what is this? This is some sort of fine line and wrinkle that just appears. I didn't even knew that I have such thing. What is happening? And in here, and in here, and oh, look at this. Like, oh, and I'm just so scared that one day after wearing such type of a makeup after 10 hours, it's just going to be like, we're just going to stay. I'm like, Sasha away, please, Sasha away. So yes, Paris Star Channel gives an orange light to the foundation from Guerlain Terracotta. I do not believe that for me personally, it's for my skin type. Nonetheless, if I wouldn't have fine lines and wrinkles and probably be 20 years younger, I would be delighted by this foundation because it is perfecting. It is smoothing. It is on the makeup powdery side, but it looks, it looks pretty. It looks pretty. Good. So that would be all for today's episode, guys. Thank you so very much for coming and thank you so very much for watching. I'm getting so many lovely new subscribers. I love your comments. I love read anything what you want to share with me. Thank you so very much. For the next episode, I prepared a little bit of a surprise and I'm very curious about this. And there you have it, guys, the Chanel. A face palette from Chanel um, that can be used on, on your face and on your eyes. We are going to put this to the test and see what is going on. I don't even remember when last time Chanel launched some sort of a face palette. <laughs> and this one apparently on the internet became already very viral, although it has been just launched. So we're going to put this on the test. <laughs> In the meantime, guys, this episode has come to an end. Thank you so very much for tuning in and celebrating with me diversity. That makes us all different and beautiful. It's time to say goodbye. See you soon in my next episode. But for the moment, from Paris with love. Bye-bye now.